Hi, my name is Harald Sack and this is Knowledge Graphs. Lecture number two, Knowledge Representation with Graphs. In this part of the lecture we are going to talk about RDF Turtle Serialization. And we are of course considering the base architecture of the Web of Data and the Semantic Web Technology stack on the RDF level. Okay, we might remember from the last lecture that RDF comes with several different serialization formats. And of course, the most simple one is n triples, where you simply put, you know, the URIs of subject, predicate, and object um, together. And then there is another format which is called Turtle, and this, of course, will be our main focus because in Turtle it's much more readable than with n triples, especially than if it comes to um, complex uh, RDF expressions. Okay, so let's start. We start with our typical example. So we have here Mr. Spock. His origin is planet Vulcan. And of course he has a name which is Spock. This is then the plain n triple serialization that you see down here in the blue box. And what we do here is quite simple. So we have three URIs. First we have here the URI of Spock. I have chosen uh, the URI of Spock which, is, uh, uh, which comes from DBpedia. In DBpedia we have a description of Spock, which is derived from Wikipedia. You will see this in one of the subsequent lectures. So don't worry about all these long URIs. It will be pretty clear soon. So we have here URI for Spock. Then we have a URI for label. You see here already the first time that's the uh, namespace for RDF schema. Don't worry about that. RDF label is uh, here um, the, the namespace or the vocabulary that we are using for RDF. And of course you see here after the hash here comes label. That's the URI for the label property. And then we have here a literal. And of course the literal is enclosed in double quotes as we have learned and followed by um, a language abbreviation, which means this is in English. And of course that's Spock. And the second one here, again, we have Spock. His origin, so that's another property that also derives from DBpedia, and he comes from Planet Vulcan, and also this resource is taken from DBpedia. So that would be the n triple serialization. To keep everything together, you have probably also mentioned uh, or realized here that this is not a plain URI, but the URI is enclosed by angle brackets. So URIs and IRIs are in angle brackets. Then literals always are given in quotation marks. And as you have seen here in the end, of course, we have to know when the triple ends and it ends when we have a period. So the triple ends with a period. So that's a rather plain and simple format. But of course, now imagine we would have a huge graph. Then of course, it soon becomes quickly unreadable. So therefore, there's another format, which is turtle the terse RDF triple language notation. And this is, of course, an extension of RDF. And as you see here, we have explicitly or explicitly the same graph description here in RDF in turtle. That's much shorter, especially here the, the, the lower part or the lower part that you see here. So turtle allows shortcuts and abbreviations for sake of readability. So let's have a closer look on that. First of all, what you see here, we are defining so-called prefixes with the ampersand prefix directive that we have here, this associates a prefix label with a URI. So for example, here in the very first line, what I do here is I define a prefix for dbp. And the prefix should be the following URI. So it should be http colon uh, slash slash dbpedia.org slash property slash. Which means every time I'm using here exactly that prefix further on, that will be substituted simply then by that part of the URI. So this becomes then a relative URI and I can simply attach here origin. So this is a prefix directive, which means I don't have to write then here these things in angle brackets. And of course, I'm saving a lot of space uh, since I only have to give a prefix definition once. And I can, can define lots of prefixes as you see here. That's the first thing. Second thing. We have another directive. This is the base directive. And with the base directive, I can give uh, a URI or a base URI for the entire RDF file I'm currently editing. This is especially important if, for example, yeah, most of the things that I'm uh, defining here 
um, resides in the very same namespace and then of course I can make this very short but if I'm using the base directive please keep in mind what I'm using here then so the extension or the suffix that I'm adding behind base has to be written here again in angle brackets so therefore we have here Spock in angle brackets and also Vulcan from Star Trek in angle brackets. So these are the first two, let's say, means of abbreviation. So that's not semantically, let's say, uh, complex. So there is no new semantics added here to RDF. It's simply some kind of syntactic sugar, these kind of abbreviations that you can use here. So that was prefix and base. Let's go ahead. We can further abbreviate turtle. If you closely inspect the following, it's exactly the same again. So you see here we are still talking about the same graph. But of course here something is missing. Spock is missing in the second line here. But the difference you may have spotted here is instead of a period at the end of the triple, we have here used a semicolon. And the semicolon indicates that subsequent triples have exactly the same subject, which means I don't have to repeat Spock, which is especially handy if, for example, I want to add lots of properties to Spock. Then I simply have, I don't have to repeat it. What I do is simply then behind my first uh, property value pair, I simply add a semicolon and then continue with the next um, property value pair. So this is another means of abbreviation and of course it uh, readability will be definitely increased by that. But that's not enough. So just imagine the following thing that we have, let's say, the same property but different values. Like for example here in that situation we have again Spock and Spock was portrait in different times of course by different actors. It, he was portrait by, by Leonard Nimoy, then from uh, by Zachary Quinto or also by Ethan Peck. Usually I would have to write in N triples of course always subject predicate object but of course since here the subject and the prop property or predicate are the same. What I can do is here, of course, I use, if you look closely at that line, instead of a period or semicolon, I, I simply use a comma. And by using a comma, this indicates that subsequent triples have exactly the same subject and property. This is also referred to as a property list. And I simply can then write behind Spock and DBO Portrait, I can simply write the three names that I want to add here. Again, see the names enclosed by angle brackets, which means they are using here the base directive, this uh, URI prefix. And uh, then I separate them simply by comma and after the last one I put in here a period. That's all. So this is the next way to abbreviate turtle, fur turtle further. So far so good. What else can we do? Okay, let's uh, take a look at this one, what we have here. Again, this is a typed literal list. So literals, of course, can be typed, as we know. So look at the following example. We have here Leonard Nimoy. And of course, Leonard Nimoy has a name given, so we know already here RDF label. And of course, he might have a birth date that is given here as a date. And uh, for example, here is another date, active a year's start date, so when did he start being an actor, for example, this was in 1951, also a date, but given here only as a year, so that's another data type as you see here, and also here probably um, the number of his children. So he has two children and this is given as an integer. And you see here how exactly these literals uh, are expressed or encoded with RDF turtle. So we have here then a lot, lots of prefixes because for uh, we need of course prefixes once for, for RDF as label. We need one for the uh, properties here, birth date and uh, active year start year. And we need another property here for, for the children. So this is DBO, DBR and the other one we also need um, RDFS exactly. We have a base uh, prefix here that's the same as always. And um, what else do we have? We have here one prefix for XSD, which is XML schema definition. You might remember when we were talking about literals and typed literals, of course, we have the possibility to add a data type to a literal and we could choose there from the XML schema namespace. So therefore we need here the XML schema namespace. And you see here how it's written. So it's just like the book, like you know it. So if we have a label, Leonard Nimoy, that's a string. So we have here string enclosed by 
double quotes followed by here um, a country identifier and then we have here the birth date. This is a date, so the date again is given as a string according to a specific format. You have here the year, the month and the day and then it's followed by hat hat and then you have uh, the namespace that we are using XSD for XML schema definition and date then is the XML schema data type that we are using. That's the date data type so that the system knows how to interpret that string. The same here for example for active year start year. So we have here 1951 and you see it's given here in exactly the same way. The only thing what you do here for a proper date identifier you add also a month and a day and since you we do not know exactly the starting day so we only want to interpret that as a year. So then this is followed by XSD G year. So that's another data type given by XML schema definition. And the very last one you see here, we have uh, given two children and this is then two, again followed by XSD integer and then we know exactly yeah, this number has to be interpreted as an integer. So this is the way how literals and typed literals are encoded in Turtle. So far so good. A special situation I want to show you here is how do I express Henry relations. What does that mean? So simply look at the following thing. What I want to express here, we look at first at the graph is of course we have here Mr. Spock and his position is first officer or science officer and then look at the ships. He has, uh, he, he was uh, going to serve it's first the, the Enterprise NGC or NCC uh, 17001 and later on he was serving on the NCC 1701-A. And we have here the dates accordingly. So one is earlier, so uh, 2265, I guess this is then for the first enterprise and 2287, this is then for the second enterprise. However, if I write the graph in that way, the problem is of course, which one is associated to which? And this we can't say because, you know, all of these edges, they are not given in a specific sequence. They are, the sequence is arbitrary. And the question is, of course, how do we exactly model which part belongs to which other part in this kind of an annual relation? Because we have, let's say, here several ves vessels associated to, to Spock that are again associated with several start dates and probably also with several positions. So how do we model that in RDF? Our problem here is the unique association. And for that, exactly for that thing, blank notes have been introduced. You remember blank notes? So far, we have said blank notes are used for existential, let's say, assumptions and statements, but they are also used for enary relations. And this is how. First, let's have a look at the graph. What we do here, we are using two blank notes to use them to associate the correct uh, vessel here to the correct start date. And another blank note here for the second vessel and the second start date and the position. So in both Spock served as a first officer or science officer. So that's exactly the same thing. So blank notes can be introduced to represent multi-valued enary relationships. And they can be introduced for resources that don't need a name. So they are kind of auxiliary notes because they simply aggregate. And if you remember correctly, they, can't all, they cannot be addressed from outside. So because they don't have a URI, they are here simply used for aggregation. Now, how do I encode this in Turtle? So we want to encode exactly that graph. So let's have a look. So we start with the rear part. So first of all, we want to aggregate the right stuff within a blank node. So what we have here, look at the lower part here. You see here we have two square brackets and these two square brackets denote an anonymous blank node as a subject. So that would be the subject and then simply as we know it, there follows position, first officer, there follows start date, there follows vessel and since they all have the same subject, this is of course here followed by a semicolon. And in the end, we close everything with a period. So instead of a URI, Remember, blank notes don't have URIs, they cannot be addressed from outside. We have here these two square brackets as an abbreviation for this is a blank note and this blank note here resides as a subject. Okay, it becomes now of course a bit complicated if I want to connect that blank note to other nodes. 
because if every blank node then has exactly these square brackets associated with, it would be a bit difficult if internally in the graph I, I do not know to which square brackets I now direct if I have them on the object place. So therefore they have introduced another solution when or for the case that the anonymous node, node is at the object node or at the object position. So let's have a look at the next slide. Here you see what's happening next. So now the um, expression becomes much longer. We want now to express that we have here Mr. Spock and he is associated with two different deployments. So let's look here at the first deployment and instead of letting follow two square brackets we simply open the square brackets. Of course we close it again at some later point but we don't write now everything which follows that blank node um, behind the closing bracket. What we do is we write it simply inside. So to know exactly that what comes inside is associated exactly to that node and has this node as a subject. And on the other hand we would simply know okay everything which comes in front here in that triple is then of course in front of exactly that blank node. So we would have here Spock deployment then opening a blank node and within then the blank node we would have the position, the start date and the vessel. And the same thing here follows for the lower part, so for the second affiliation of Mr. Spock. And this then is called a so-called nested anonymous blank node. So we have two nested anonymous blank nodes here in that example. And don't forget of course in the end here what you need is definitely a period to close your entire structure. So you might think okay that now becomes a bit complicated and I confess that's really true especially if you include many blank nodes within your graph and of course many other nodes are referring to that node then it might become really complicated. So therefore there is another solution so they of course the, the inventors of RDF saw that and so yeah probably we have to or we could deal with that also in another way. And another way that they come, came up with is the so-called dereferenceable blank nodes. So they are given here in green and the only difference you see here they have here they have something like a name so they have an ID. This is an ID again since it's a blank node it cannot be referenced from outside. So this is, is a rather special URI and these kind of URIs that you can use for your blank nodes for dereferenceable blank nodes only dereferenceable inside your file not from outside um, is usually structured in the following way that it starts with an underscore so that's the prefix for these dereferenceable blank nodes and then you simply can give IDs and uh, there is, it's, it's not a standard but it's somehow a convention that you call them for example ID1, ID2, ID3 and so on so that you simply count them. And the nice thing is then, so you can write this then in the way you are used to write the stuff so without these uh, square brackets. So you simply write here, let's look here at the rear part we have here ID1 and then the position the start date and the vessel and you can simply write it as you are used to write it you have here ID1 position start date vessel and for the, 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 the front part Spock and deployment you simply then have here Spock deployment and then you can say as an object part you can refer to that blank node so therefore it's dereferenceable to ID1 and ID2 and of course don't forget here the default namespace for the dereferenceable blank nodes that's the underscore. So these are dereferenceable blank nodes that can only be referenced from inside the document or inside the graph. Well so we learned a lot already about RDF turtle and now in the next section of the lecture we want to see how we can build up new models based on RDF schema.